Hello everybody, welcome back to the internet's best reactions. Today we are talking about the French Grand Prix around Paul Ricard. And I'll be completely honest with you, I'd prepared for a very uneventful recap of the French Grand Prix because, well, it's Paul Ricard and I just expected some good memes from you because all of you would have been on Twitter, but instead we had an absolute banger, especially for Paul Ricard's standards. So I'm feeling energetic and hyped. I'm sure all of you are as well after the race. It just sets up the rest of the week brilliantly. We've got a triple header coming. Let's share your best reactions right now. Let's start at the very beginning, as we always do, at CJGRW98, Lewis when Max goes off in turn one. I don't think many people expected that to happen. It was kind of an even start between the two of them, heading down to quite a short run down towards turn one, but a very difficult one. Nico Rosberg said on the run-up into the race that the wind could have provided some issues, and it did for Max Verstappen, just couldn't slow it down. And then Hamilton took the lead, and I thought that was going to be it. I'm pretty sure a lot of you thought, well, that's it then. Let's just uh, see that one off. Hamilton has definitely won this race. But they actually were able to sort of follow each other, and it was close for the entirety of it. We, we this was literally the penultimate lap that we saw at uh, the battle for the lead. So I'm very happy. Uh, but there are, there are some good memes, actually, of people basically just kind of writing the race off, not even halfway through. So... They're coming. Another person that had a bad start was Mr. Lando Norris at Alfie Short 9. Lando at the start. Yeah, he, he dropped a significant amount of places and was even behind Danny Rick uh, after the first lap, but made it work beautifully. So there was a small amount of pain, but then Lando had a great strategy, went long, which didn't look like the best strategy at the time, but obviously the tyres flew off the cliff and Lando and McLaren in general were just awesome. They just managed the tyres beautifully. Danny Rick in P6 as well. And they were just flying through the field. Not only did we have a fight for the lead, the midfield were popping off as well. But Ricard, you outdid yourself. Now, this is where some people, I had to like the tweets because at the time it could have been a boring race. So it may have been relative, but it's definitely not. At Munford 1999, preparing to watch the race like. Where's your matchsticks now, I want to ask, because... Oh, I was on the edge of my seat until the very, well, maybe not the last lap, it was pretty much done then, but lap 52, that's just, I'm just buzzing, I'm buzzing, the whole, the whole episode is going to be me buzzing. At CK7333, we're now expecting a dry race, of course, we had torrential rain for the F3 race that happened earlier on in the day, everyone's popping off on Twitter, I'm getting really excited, everyone's looking at the weather forecasts. And then you just see, you see like this this sort of slot between or before the race. Then then the actual race itself weather forecast, just dry as hell. And then afterwards, rain. Again, the F1 shield of just the heat coming off of the circuit just evaporates the rain. I don't know if that's actually true or not. I'm just pretending to be scientific. But it, there clearly is something that goes on with, because of the fact all of the heat and the combustion i don't know i'm literally talking rubbish now but you get the picture that weather just doesn't like being there if it's wet i think that makes sense <laughs> it doesn't but we move at duda underscore cantaluppi lap six and hamilton's already complaining about the tires that was a big thing a lot of you were rushing in with tweets complaining about lewis complaining about tires because it's just a standard meme isn't it where lewis complains and then usually sets fastest laps but he was complaining pretty early and it seemed to be the truth as well because it ended up being a two-stop race for max which just about worked but the tires were shredding all over the place and they were kind of expecting going into the race because the track temps were so much lower that maybe it wouldn't have put as much pressure on the tires but alas they just fell off which was lovely for us because as much as there was mainly a one stop for most of the the drivers out there there were significant difference differences in the stint lengths and that is fine that makes a one stop race pretty decent and then you got max on the mediums as well and on the two stop so lovely at its merry work, Hamilton not expecting the tyres to last as long as they think. <laughs> Five Lewis Hamilton fastest laps incoming. Didn't happen, I don't think. In fact, it was, you know, it was kind of trading fastest laps at the start of the race. Of course, you had uh, Verstappen, sorry, Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas, all within, I think at one point they were within about one second, all three of them, which was, uh, which was pretty awesome to watch. Quite suspenseful and tense. And then they kind of broke off a little bit because of the tyre wear but overall I would have taken that for a French Grand Prix just there and then then being quite close you kind of accept with the low expectations coming into this race that we're not gonna get an absolute worldie so I would have taken you know them being separated by five seconds at the end of the race you know oh it's quite interesting but you know it's, it's, it's France but instead Paul Ricard he, I think it's a top three 
uh, of this season so far. It has to be. Another tweet of somebody uh, basically writing off this race, which I really enjoy. R <laughs> R4JDO underscore. <laughs> I mean, you can read that. And, well, there was definitely more than a zero percent chance of it being an interesting race because we had rain at least looming in the air but we didn't even need rain can you imagine with all of that going on and then just throw in a little thunderstorm as well i don't think my heart could have taken it now i mentioned the uh, mclarens coming through the field jp17 both mclarens overtaking alonso within a few corners and pretty much everybody in the midfield it felt like especially danny rick i'm actually really happy to see danny rick finally get some confidence back in that mclaren yes he did get beaten by Lando, but I feel like it was much better from him. It, you know, he was making moves. He was the lead McLaren for a lot of it, although Lando's strategy was better at the end. So who knows if they'd been on the same strategy, would Danny Rick have beaten Lando? Possibly. But uh, it's nice to see Danny Rick at least, you know, there or thereabouts with Lando. At DP Smith 93, Norris stealing that position off Alonso like. <laughs> of course, Danny Rick got through and then Lando threw that really fast right hander. Le Boussier, I want to call it. It's probably horrendously wrong and I've just butchered it. I'm sorry. But uh, into that next right hander just, just went up the inside. Alonso had absolutely no pace and it was a beautiful little move. And there were so many other moves that I don't think I'm going to be able to cover every single one of them. But the midfield in general was awesome, wasn't it? I just want to... Just, cover that off before people say you didn't talk about the midfield there was just it was up and down to and throwing you think that alpines are looking good although alonso was pretty decent but he was falling away at the start but then came back and i'm very energetic and i love it good race right guys i just want to ask please do subscribe to the channel if you are new if you just dip in and out of this series and don't drop us a little subscribe it'll be lovely if you join the wtf1 family we're trying to get to a million subscribers by the end of the year that would be insane and i may well shed a tear or two because i genuinely did not think this was ever possible when we started this journey so please do drop us a subscribe i love you a long time at hurricane barca live look at the tire graining throughout the field it was yeah I'm sure Pirelli was sat there seeing some onboard cameras and were sweating because, of course, we didn't really get any warning uh, in Baku when we had the tyre failures for Stroll and Verstappen. But you looked at like the front, especially with the front left, they were just being chewed off like a dog had been on them. Genuinely, they were falling away so quickly and you could see offline as well. There were so many marbles that I'm sure Pirelli had a few concerns, but fortunately... Well, to be fair, we didn't have any retirements, I don't think. So race rundown is going to be fun later. But, you know, at least there was no you know, concerns or anything. Pirelli did their job and made sure it was safe for the drivers and also provided a great race in terms of strategy. At Sajansk 1, <laughs> I don't know if this is dead yet, so I'm just going to include it because it's ingrained in my brain still. Always gets me. The Lance Stroll replay, just poor old Lance. You know, the amount of aggression that we had towards, well, not him, but his picture in Monaco when it cut away from uh, that amazing battle uh, in Monaco with Vettel and Gasly and, and the like. So not Lance's fault, but it's still very much stuck in my brain. Now, this surprised me when the stops came about where Bottas pitted and then Verstappen pitted a lap later and then Hamilton pitted a lap later than that. And Verstappen actually got the undercut at Dave McKeegan, Max winning the undercut that Mercedes started. I almost leapt off my seat because I, I, was, I was looking at, you know, him coming down the straight. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a bit closer than expected. All of a sudden, Verstappen's flying up the inside into turn one. And taking the net race lead. Perez was ahead. But taking the net race lead away from Hamilton. It just came out of nowhere. And you have to question Mercedes' strategy there. That you kind of think that if, uh, if Bottas has pitted, Verstappen's going to cover that pretty much every day of the week. So why they haven't sort of almost said, right... Lewis come in the next lap because Verstappen's going to have to cover off Valtteri. I don't know. Maybe they thought maybe that Red Bull would carry on for the rest of the race and it'd be a, a, a roll reversal, an Uno reverse card, but it didn't happen. It was a bit of a strange one and Lewis was a bit dumbfounded and Mercedes were a bit like, sorry, Lewis. So yeah, I think they, uh, they haven't been on top form Mercedes yet with their strategy this season. At Formula Reaction, <laughs> this, this, I can actually hear this. It's, it's brilliant uh, because... All you can hear is mate a lot of the time when he's kind of you know very sort of pent up and trying to get his words out really quickly whilst driving at 200 miles an hour. Fair enough. I think most of us would be that way as well. But I can literally hear that in my brain. So well done. At Ben underscore good stats. I'm once again asking for Valtteri to do something. I think that's a little bit harsh considering where he was in Baku. I think he did a much better job this weekend. Just wasn't able to keep the tyres in, in better nick uh, than Lewis did. But 
you know, it was there. Is that enough for Mercedes? Probably not, because it got beaten by Perez, as, as well as Verstappen, of course, but obviously Lewis did as well. So, uh, yeah, he could have maybe done a little bit more, but then at the same time, he was asking to do a two-stop strategy, and Mercedes just didn't really listen to him. So, maybe some of it again is on Merck, because Valtteri was very much in tune with what the best strategy may have been. Who has won Tweet of the Week? Right, Tweet of the Week time now, and <laughs> this is brilliant. At Vettel Laporte. Mercedes when Bottas offers genuinely beneficial strategy advice. <laughs> I can hear that as well. I can literally hear that scene because I love the in-betweeners. Uh, so well done, Joey. You win an amazing Fanatec prize. We'll be in touch to, to send that amazing gift over to you. Remember, if you want to be in with a chance of winning an amazing Fanatec wheel to go into your collection or maybe start your Fanatec collection, all you have to do is do a funny tweet and put hashtag WTF1 at the end of your tweet and you are basically in the draw for me to potentially pick you and choose you as a winner. Easy! At Halor123211, Verstappen being chased by the two Mercedes behind, it was pretty intense. You know, as soon as Verstappen got ahead, the two Mercedes looked quick at the start of their hard tyre stint. And Max was kind of holding on for dear life. And they almost kind of pushed themselves into that two-stop window because, I mean, Hamilton was just going for it. I think Bottas was just trying to cling on to the two of them if he possibly could. And, of course, Max was pushing really hard as well and went on to that medium stint at the end. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was tense. Like, genuinely, I didn't think they'd be able to follow that closely around France, but they did. At Tilkend... <laughs> That's, I think that's pretty much what Max was feeling like, especially when we heard his team radio, although at the towards the end, Max's team radio just sounded like a Dalek. But up until that point, it was a very, very sort of frustrated and just wanting to get his words out and then focus on the driving. Because, I mean, can you imagine having both Mercedes behind you? Is your teammate not really that close? It must be incredible pressure. But Max Verstappen clearly dealing with it well, and it just shows that he's ready to win a world title. It just does. Now, this was a little bit of a problem that I had as well. At Thyron, F1 broadcast showing the Rick overtaking small format. There were a lot of midfield battles, probably half of which we were seeing on replays. Maybe a, a quarter of them we'd see on actual big screen, and the other quarter was just in this small box. And I know, fair enough, they're just you know concentrating on the battle for the lead, but if it's a second or, a, or more between first and second, there's not really going to be an overtake. And you just cut straight to it if it gets underneath. But instead, they just lingered on that and had the tiny little boxes, which, fair enough, is better than nothing. Don't get me wrong. But I'd much rather see it just be pushed over to the big screen and then push it back to the small screen if, you know, when it's done. There's another tweet pretty much explaining it. At F1 Matthew, all these midfield battles happening and the TV not showing them was a little bit frustrating. Some people were even comparing the French TV directors with Monaco. I mean, there's night and day between the two of them. Monaco was horrific. France wasn't too bad, don't get me wrong. We missed a bit of live action, but at least we saw a lot of it in replays. I guess that's better than nothing. Have my expectations gone down now? I don't know, but uh, yeah, it wasn't ideal. So I mentioned about Max sounding like a Dalek from Doctor Who at AVG5. Max trying to move his microphone at 200 miles an hour. It kind of takes me back to when I think it was Mazepin around Monaco was basically saying, I can't change these buttons. And fair enough, Monaco is the most difficult probably to do that. But the fact that Red Bull was saying, yeah, could you just move your, move your microphone and your helmet whilst, you know, you're flying down one of the French Grand Prix straights. I mean... The, the guy just must have so much mental capacity. I just end up steering myself into a barrier trying to do too many things. Definitely. So coming towards the end of the race now, Max, of course, on those medium tyres. His first stop or his first pass was Perez. He just kind of fell off the track. Fair enough. You know, teammates do that sort of stuff, especially when Max was fighting for the win. And then Bottas. <laughs> what are you doing, my friend? At Ash Frick Live. Bottas letting Max through when he's meant to be blocking for Lewis. It wasn't the best defensive maneuver that you've ever seen fair enough his tires were pretty shot but he was kind of defending fresh air for a while and then outbraked himself the poor bloke it wasn't the best he could have at least held max up for one more lap because that might have been enough if that move that max made on lewis was actually on the final lap perhaps lewis would have maybe defended a bit harder but alas this is the way the cookie crumbled i don't know why i said it like that <laughs> that's where the cookie crumbled at that ready kid, Bottas after losing losing his position to Verstappen at the end. <laughs> Come on. You don't you don't surely think Bottas is just letting 
Max through so that Lewis doesn't win. Come on. I mean, to be fair, when I'd love to be a fly on the wall inside there. You know, contract meetings and all that sort of stuff that's going on. Is Valtteri signed for next year yet? Is there even any chance of him staying with the team? So many questions to be answered, but I don't think Valtteri would just let him through. Finally, one more on Bottas at Jota Mikado 96 Bottas on the radio, of course, where I mentioned about the fact that he said the two stop and he was angry. Like, it wasn't just a normal, yeah, really disappointed or whatever. He was proper effing and blinding about the fact that he said a two-stop strategy. And he was kind of just left out there as a sitting duck. And perhaps, you know, he was that second driver. Go on an alternate strategy, the mediums. And then you'd cover off the likes of Max Verstappen pitting. So, I don't know. It could have it could have worked, but then it might have worked so well for Valtteri that he would then be behind Lewis. And then it, they'd have to swap positions. And Lewis maybe loses more points in the championship. You got to think as the Mercedes boss, I mean, Valtteri is pretty much out of it, isn't he? So I wonder if they just kind of left him out there. No, I think they did. They definitely did. At Will Amos 13, Red Bull pulling a Mercedes on Mercedes. It must feel good for Red Bull to go for the aggressive strategy and beat Mercedes. Although it was pretty touch and go. But of course, that's taken a look back to Spain as an example where Hamilton was able to pit and then beat Verstappen. The turn did table. At Battery Voltas, Mercedes do the two-stop to win in Spain. Red Bull. Yeah, they, to be fair, it was a risky strategy. It was a ballsy strategy, and it almost didn't pay off. But you have to say, Max did absolutely everything he could with those tyres. Kept them in a good window, because they looked pretty shot at the end as well. So if it pushed too hard out the pits, he could have easily not won the race. But it was perfect. Right, social media team championship time now, and we've got some very good tweets this time round, so I'm very excited to show you the top three from the French Grand Prix. In third place, we have Aston Martin Cognizant F1 team replying to Mercedes saying this is going to be close with, right, we think Lance Stroll might get Carlos Sainz for P10, you know. Bit of bounce, love it, you get a point. Well done, Aston. These other two tweets are in an absolute league of their own, and I found it very difficult to pick between the two, but here we go. In second place, we have Mercedes AMG F1 <laughs> with the high school musical meme. They really tried for three points. They've looked into what I like, and high school musical is certainly one of those things. And uh, I mean, you can you can see the meme. It's, it's quite an old one now, but it just came out of nowhere. I really enjoyed it, and I think a lot of you did as well, but it just missed out on top spot. And the winners of the Social Media Team Championship are Haas F1 Team. Our first Q2 of the season of sorts. I've won, but at what cost? It's a very, very good meme to put there. I mean, it's, it's good, Bance. Haas are just starting to creep in, aren't they? They kind of start to creep into the fray of Social Media Team Championships on a top three. And um, I'm liking it. Can they carry on? Can they utilise Gunter as an example? You know, more, more of that. And you're, you're pretty much guaranteed some points from me. So, yeah, well done, Haas. Full points. That's one point for Aston Martin Cognizant F1 team. Two points for Mercedes AMG F1. And three points for Haas F1. And now it's time for Race Rundown with your host, Matthew Gallagher. to do 20 runners 20 no one dnf which means i have to say 20 names in a row oh my god i don't want to do this race rundown time now and goodness gracious me there's 20 finishers you know what i'm not scared i'm not scared i think i did one a few races ago straight out the blocks let's do it again here we go the finishers of the french grand prix were verstappen hamilton perez bottas no I just ran out of capacity. You know what I mean when I said about Max Verstappen's capacity? I'm literally reading and I, I, I run out of capacity. Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Bottas. Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Bottas, Norris, Ricard. Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Rottas. Who is Rottas? Who is Rottas? Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Bottas. Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Bottas, Norris, Ricard, Gassi, Alonso, Vettel, Stroll, Sainz, Russell, Reisel. Verstappen, Hamilton, Perez, Rottas. Verstappen Hamilton Perez Bottas. Nope. Had too much fluid in my mouth. Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Verstappen Hamilton Perez Bottas. Norris Ricardo Gasly Alonso Vettel Stroll signs for Resassel. 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 Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Verstappen Hamilton. Verstappen Hamilton Perez Bottas. Norris Ricardo Gasly Alonso Salonzo Salonzo. Who is Salonzo? Verstappen Hamilton Perez Bottas. 
Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Bottas Norris Ricardo Gasly. Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Bottas Norris. Verstappen Hamilton. Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Oh wow! Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Bottas Norris. Verstappen Hamilton. Verstappen Hamilton Perez. Bottas Norris Ricardo Gasly Alonso Vettel Stroll Sainz Russell Sonoda Ocon Giovinazzi Leclerc Raikkonen and Latifi Schumacher Mazepin. That was a good take. Maybe 30 attempts in, but it was a good take. And the non-finishers were. There you go. There you have it. The internet's best reactions is done and dusted for the French Grand Prix. Please do give this a big fat like if you enjoyed both this episode and the race itself. Because I'm energetic. I'm excited. I'm happy that Paul Ricard has just delivered. My expectations were so low and it just went through the roof, didn't it? If you want to get involved next time, use the hashtag WTF1 on Twitter and we'll pick the very best ones. And the best one of all will win an amazing Fanatec prize. Thank you to them of course, for sponsoring this this episode, this series. They're amazing. And uh, I'll see you, well, for next week because we've got a triple header coming up. Well, coming up, we're in it. We're in the triple header. Enjoy it. Austria coming up. Very much looking forward to it. Don't know why my hands are all over, over the place, but we'll see you for the next episode. Bye-bye! <laughs>